Bro. Sup bro. Our sound guy is my favorite guitar player in the world. Oh, why do you say that? Because his feel is amazing. What is this feel that you speak of? I can't explain it, you either have it, or you don't. Do I have good feel? Well. You are a really nice guy. And you have a lot of great qualities. So you are saying that I do not have good feel? How about those eagles? I am just going to sell all my gear and take up stamp collecting. Hey, I just bought a new compressor. What brings you here today? Well, I am quitting guitar. Why? Because I don't have any feel. Dude. Feel is something that can be developed over time. Wow. Really? Yes. Feel is about locking in with the rhythm section. But I can already do that. Sure. But it applies to all aspects of your playing. Including vibrato. Huh? Yes. The key to vibrato is to lock it in with the rhythm. This can be developed through metronome training. I will not quit playing guitar. I will instead start a YouTube channel where I teach music theory. Hey, Brian Kelly here from Zombie Guitar. In this video, I want to show you how you can simulate mathematically perfect vibrato using your computer. So, the vibrato is like a wave. It goes up, it goes down, up, down, up, down. So when you bend the string up, the pitch goes up. When you release the string and bring it back down to uh, the starting point, it goes back down. So vibrato is like a waveform. So, you know, if you watch that uh, stupid cartoon I posted in the beginning, that's actually a true story. That was advice given to me by our sound guy, who is uh, one of the best uh, guitar players in the local area. He specifically said, practice your vibrato to a metronome if you want to develop the feel. And, uh, you know, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, triplets, whatever you're doing, just time it to a metronome so it fits in perfectly with the click. The problem is it's not always intuitive on how exactly you're going to do that. Since vibrato is going up and down and up and down and up and down, it's kind of hard to hear eighth notes or hear sixteenth notes or hear a triplet pattern fitting to a click that goes one, two, three, four. So maybe you've tried to practice vibrato to a metronome before and uh, you've realized that this is not always as easy as it may sound. So that's what this video is about. So we are going to simulate perfect vibrato on our computers and then we can practice just going by what it sounds like. So before we get started, I just wanna make sure that you understand two things. Number one, vibrato is a series of bends and releases. All right, so that's where the waveform comes in. So um, we're just gonna be focusing on half step bends or just one fret bends. So if you're on, say, this note here, 10th fret of the B string, you'd be bending from here to here. So we're just gonna be doing half step bends for this computer simulation. So we're gonna be programming uh, this perfect vibrato using a digital audio workstation. So the one I use is called Reaper and you can download it for free for 60 days. And then after 60 days, it's gonna prompt you that you're supposed to pay for the license. The license costs $60. If you don't wanna pay for the license, the program will still be fully functional. It'll just give you a reminder screen to buy your license but the program doesn't ever stop working, so technically it's free. You should just buy the program if you like it though. So $60 for the digital audio workstation to do all this in, and then all the stuff that I will be using, the plugins, those are all free. So I'll show you how to get the plugins, and uh, you know, so basically you don't have to spend any money to simulate this vibrato. So let me turn over to the computer now and uh, let me show you how this works. So here I am inside a Reaper now, so let me first show you the two free plugins that you're gonna be uh, using. So, um, Come to Google down here. I already have it pulled up. TAL Noisemaker, T-A-L Noisemaker is the synthesizer program that we're going to use just so we can have a note, just a single flat note. 
which we're then going to apply the simulated vibrato to. So this is called the Tau Noisemaker. It looks like this. It's completely free. And then we're going to download uh, MT Power Drum Kit. So you don't need this, but I'm just using this to uh, that way. Instead, it's just instead of just uh, practicing to a boring click, we're going to actually have a drum set going on with a hi hat, bass drum, kick drum, all that stuff. So MT Power Drum Kit. This is a free uh, program. So um, get both of those things downloaded, and you're probably going to put them into C drive program files. Um, probably going to go into this folder here, Steinberg. All right, so that's where all of uh, my uh, VST plugins go, and then inside of Steinberg, VST plugins, and then all of these. So, empty power drum kits in there. Tau noise maker is in there. So make sure your uh, you know where your file path is, and then make sure that is specified here in Reaper under Options, Preferences, VST, and then make sure that file path is specified here. If you have more than one file path here, just separate them by a semicolon. Click rescan, click OK, and then the plugins. You can now uh, access the plugins in your DAW. So double click to create a new track. We're going to call this a click. So I'm going to insert a click source. Now this click source is set to whatever the tempo is of your doll. So I have it set to 100 right now. You can set it to, this is what 100 sounds like. You could set it to a really fast tempo like 160. And everything will adjust to whatever, have you, whatever you have the uh, tempo set at. So I'm just going to leave it at 100 for this tutorial. So let me just kind of uh, drag this. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is double click, add a new track. We're going to call this the pitch. This is going to be the note that we're going to uh, apply the um, vibrato to. So click effects, effects, all plugins, instruments, and then you're going to find uh, your Tal Noisemaker, which we just downloaded. And now this is applied to this track right here. So in order to get sound, you're going to do what is known as painting in an empty MIDI item. So make sure that nothing else is clicked on. Hold in the control button, or if you're on a Mac, command. So it'll make the uh, cursor turn into a pencil like this. All right, so turn it into a pencil, and then just drag. All right, so now you have created an empty MIDI item. So double click on the empty MIDI item that you just created and it opens up the piano roll. So you can zoom in and out by using your mouse wheel here. So pick a note. I'm gonna pick a higher note than that. So I'm gonna paint in this note right here. This is the note D on the piano. Just double click, zoom in, drag this to the beginning of the highlighted area. drag this all the way over. So now you just have one single obnoxious sounding note. Alright, so we're going to change the tone of this note right here by going to a preset called, come all the way down here to LD uh, triangle, LD triangle madness. So now our tone sounds like this. So that already has some kind of vibrato sound to it, so we're going to take that off. So you're going to come to Oscillator 2, and uh, just click on it, and then select Off. So now it sounds like this. But there's still delay on it, so we're going to turn the delay off, and that's going to be found in this control area. So if it's not showing, you can just click on it. Click on it, expose these uh, controls. Turn these two knobs down. Turn wet down and turn delay all the way down. So now there's no delay on this uh, synthesized tone anymore. So 
So that is the pitch. So this can be mo uh, changed to whatever you want. So right now it's set to the note D. If you want to bring it to like the note A or something, you can do that. And then just press play. You hit space bar to play and stop if you don't already know that. Um, or you can just press play on the uh, little control panel down here. But anyway, so, uh, you know, we're just going to leave it at the note D for this tutorial. So this is just one long sounding note. All right, so now I'm going to add a drum beat. And you don't have to do this. You could just keep the click track. That's perfectly fine. It's the same thing as practicing to a metronome to whatever tempo you set up here. But I think it's more interesting to have a, a hi-hat, a kick drum, and a snare. That way it feels more realistic. So let's go ahead and just add a drum beat. So double click, call it drums. Click effects to add the uh, plugin. Make sure all plugins, instruments is selected to pull up this MT Power Drum Kit. Double click on that. So this is the uh, drum plugin. So click on grooves and you have a bunch of different types of grooves. We're going to select eighth closed hi-hat. So that's going to be uh, the hi-hat's going to be playing eighth notes on a closed hi-hat. So select that folder and it pulls up a bunch of grooves here. So by default this is set to three bars. Set this to four. It actually doesn't really matter, but pick the simplest one, groove number one, and then just click and drag to your doll. So right like that. So now we have our drum beat. All right, so that is that. So now just highlight an area. So we're going to highlight just one of these bars, like one, two, three, four. All right. So you see some of the lines are darker and some of them are lighter. So from dark line to dark line, that is a four count. So just uh, select one, click, drag. So it highlights that area. So, and then you're going to want to make sure that this green button is enabled. This is looping. If it's off, it's like that. If it's on, it's like that. So this is just going to loop this area now. All right. So I'm actually going to change this drum beat. I would rather have the um, kick on the one and the snare on the three. Right now it's uh, kick on the one and three and snare on the two and four. I want it to just be kick on the one, snare on the three. So double click this area here. And uh, these are this is your kick, this is your snare. So you can kind of move this around. So there's the one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I'm just going to, if you double click on any of these, it will delete it. So double click, double click, drag this back to the three. So now it sounds like this. So I just want to do that for all four bars. So now here's our drum beat. So X out of this, our drum beat has now been altered. So let me show you how to add the vibrato now. So in order to add vibrato to this, click on the effects, and this is the knob that's going to adjust the pitch. So this is the uh, tune knob. If you turn this all the way to this direction, it uh, increases it by one semitone. If you turn it all the way to this direction, it decreases it by one semitone. So all the way up like this is like the top of the bend so let me show you and then all the way down would be one semitone down or one fret down all right so um, manually doing that would be like manually adding vibrato 
but we want to automate this knob. So in order to automate something in Reaper, you can do this in any digital audio workstation. What you're going to do is you're going to select this trim. So this opens up all the potential things to automate. So all of these different, um, all these options are the, all the different knobs on the synthesizer. The Tau Noisemaker plugin. So we're going to find the Oscillator Master Tune. Select that. All right. So now this automation curve shows up and you can adjust the size of this like this. All right, so now we're going to apply a waveform to this. And uh, you do that by right clicking and you go to automation items, insert new automation item. And right here, you have to right click right on this thing in order to get to the properties menu. If you right click anywhere else, it's not going to give you that properties menu option. So you have to right click right on this, select properties. LFO shape, change it to sign. This now has a curve to it. So the top right here is going to be the one half step higher than the original note. So right here is our baseline. This is the note that we have set our pitch to, which is set right up here. So um, this is our baseline. This is one half step higher or one fret or one semitone. That all means the same thing. Back down to baseline, which is the unaltered note and then this would be going down one half step or one fret looking at this you can see that it's it's automatically adjusting this all right so when you're bending vibrato you can only go to baseline and then go up and then back to baseline all right so we have to remove this portion of the curve so change the baseline all the way to 100% and it brings it up to there. So then we have to get this such that this point right here, the bottom of the curve, the start of it is all the way over here. So you do that by adjusting the phase. So if you move the phase around like this, it does that. So if you set the phase to 25, you'll get that. So right there is baseline and then it goes up to the top of the bend which is a one half step bend and then back down exactly to the rhythm so that sounds like this so right click go to properties so you can adjust the type of vibrato by now adjusting the cycles so if you make it to two cycles it does that so now it's going up down up down so over the four count over the bar it's going up down up down up down so let's hear it all right so that's very very slow vibrato so if you change it to four it'll sound like this so that's eighth note vibrato so it's going up and down all within each click. So a click is going one, two, three, four, and this is going up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. All right, so up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So then if you want to change it to 16th note vibrato, you change the cycles to eight, so now it's going up, down, up, down, all for each click. So it's 1 E N uh, 2 E N uh, 3 E N uh, 4 E N uh. So now you're now you're fitting 16th note vibrato over the course of this. So let's hear how that sounds. And then if you want to change it to a triplet pattern, you can change cycles to 6. And now you have one, two, three. So up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So it's doing a triplet pattern to the click. And then if you wanted to do sextuplet or, um, you know, 16th note triplets or whatever you want to call it, you can do 12. And now it's fitting six. So it's up, down, up, down, up, down. So one, two, three, four, five, six 
It's fitting in six every one click. <laughs> So let's set it back to eight again. Um, so now that's fitting one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a, so it's 16th note, a 16th note uh, vibrato pattern that you'd be practicing. Um, and then you can change the tempo too. You can change it to like 120 if you want to do it at that tempo. Maybe 160. All right, so we'll leave it at like 120. Now let's say you don't want to go up a half step. Let's say you just want to do it like a quarter. So instead of going all the way to the top, we'll just have it go halfway. So you can see these uh, grid lines here going in the horizontal direction. So right click here, properties. So we're gonna adjust the amplitude. So if you adjust the amplitude to 50% and then you bring the baseline down to, I think it's actually minus 25, and then bring this to 25, so maybe this, there we go, so 25 and 25, usually whenever you're trying to do these things, it's always going to be in uh, multiples of 25, so set baseline to 25, amplitude to 25, phase is at 25, so now this is just doing quarter note vibrato. So maybe you might want to change the cycles now to 16. So now this is doing a 30 second note pattern. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for every click. Or maybe you want to do that six, one, two, three, four, five, six, the sextuplet thing. Or eight. And then you can adjust your note too by clicking here. So right now we're on the note D if you want to practice doing vibrato on the note A. So you can change your note to whatever you want. You can do that. And uh, then if you want to extend this, because uh, right now this is only going for one bar and it's looping right now. So if you want to get, get rid of this loop, hit escape. And then you can just drag. All right, so you can make the vibrato go as long as you want. So starting out here, you'll have... All right. And then you can copy your drum beat, copy the MIDI item just by, you know, hitting copy or just hitting control C and then paste and just paste it a bunch of times. So you have a drum beat going the whole time. So once you have this set up, you can then, you know, you can change whatever you want. You can change the tempo. You can change the note to, that you're practicing. Uh, you can extend the drum beat as long as you want. You can change your drum pattern if you want to play to a different drum pattern. That's all done within this uh, plugin right here. All right, and then if you want to, uh, if you want to change your vibrato pattern, that's all done by just right-clicking properties, and this will affect the whole, the whole area now. As long as you, or however big you made this, it'll affect the entire thing. So. You know, let's say I want to go back to uh, properties. Let's say I want to get it back to what we had originally where it's going all the way to the top. So I'll do 100. Amplitude, set that to zero. Cycles, we'll do eight. Let me just zoom in over here. All right, so just looking at just one, one click here. It's going up, down, up, down. So that's the 16th note pattern. One, two, three, four. Four notes for every click. Starting back here with no vibrato and then get coming to the point of vibrato, it sounds like this. And then if you want to shorten this automation curve and hear what vibrato sounds like, no vibrato, vibrato, no vibrato. If 
you want to do something like that. So um, that's that. So let's even take this a step further now. So now let's say you want to practice your bend vibrato. So that's where you bend to a desired pitch and then you add vibrato to the note at the top of the bend. So you can still do that, but you just have to understand that your bass line now, the bass line, the uh, middle point right here, is now going to be the note. So let's say we're starting here on the 10th fret of the B string and you want to bend up to here, the 12th fret, which would be the note B. So you're your baseline pitch is now going to be the note B. So we have to set this baseline to B, and you do that by clicking, setting the note to B. You can do that B, you could do this B up here if you want. So I think this one sounds better down here. So that is our baseline. So then when you're doing a uh, uh, vibrato from the top of a bend, you're now releasing and bringing the pitch down a little bit and then back up, then down, then back up, then down, then back up. So if you want to come down by, you know, a semitone, if you want to come down by a note or by a fret, you wouldn't be coming all the way down. You'd just be coming down a half step and then back up to pitch, down a half step, back up to pitch. Or if you just want to come down a quarter, that's fine too. You know, when you're doing uh, bend vibrato, you know, usually it's really up to you but anyway you could set this to have you know the baseline which is the top be your desired pitches which is the note B and then have it come down either a half step or come down a quarter step and you can do all that again just by coming to this properties menu so now I'm going to do baseline minus 25 amplitude minus 25 and then everything else is the same so now Here's our bass line right here, so that's the top of the bend, so that would be our desired note. So we're bending from the 10th fret up to the 12th fret, so that's right here. And then this is set to quarter notes right now. So you're releasing a little bit, coming back up, releasing, coming back up, releasing, coming back up. So. So that's, that would be practicing, you know, your bend, release a little tiny bit, come back to the bend, that type of vibrato. Um, and then you could change this to come down all the way to the bottom if you want also. Right click on properties. Uh, I forget exactly what this is. I think this may be amplitude 50, minus 50. Let's see if minus 50 works. So baseline minus 50, amplitude minus 50. So that is starting at the top of the bend, releasing by by one or one semitone, coming back up to the full bend, releasing by one semitone, full bend in a 16 note pattern, which is determined by the cycles. So again, if you want to do like a triplet pattern or something like that, or that's a triplet pattern is six. One, two, three. So. All right, perfectly mathematically accurate to as computer generated mathematical accuracy of what perfect vibrato would sound like. So you just kind of practice along with this stuff, practice the notes that you want to practice your vibrato on. And this is like practicing to a metronome on steroids. All right, so this is just something I came up with this weekend. It's pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool. Um, I think I'm going to start doing it. And, uh, you know, maybe if you guys want to start doing it too, let me know how it turns out. But uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask. See you next time. Mm -hmm.